Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Time to see where our curiosity will take us. <laughs> we have our stereo high priority slip assessment. That is front has 323 and rear has 323. Those are good. After we take the image, we retract, we close the molly cover, and then we are going to set up to DRT Comas. We spin the turret and we go down. Hi, I'm Stephanie Oy and I work at NASA JPL as a Mars Curiosity rover driver. To plan our rover's activities, we use images that were taken by the rover with the left and right eye camera to build 3D terrain models. To do operations remotely, we wear two headsets. On one ear, we talk to the other rover planners, and on the other ear is the rest of the uplink team. I never really imagined that we could be doing rover operations from home, uh, all split up and not centralized in one place. We do rely a lot on being able to communicate with each other and, and share what we're doing and uh, sort of checking in with all of the different roles. And so when we first started talking about trying to put this together, I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Usually we have anywhere from two to four people doing that on a given day. And we're all sitting right next to each other in a corner. We can look at each other's screens. We can talk directly to each other and talk through and try to work out any questions or concerns that we may have. And that proximity really is a benefit. But we have uh, managed to replicate that mostly <laughs> on, on a separate uh, teleconference line. Um, but we do really miss uh, the personal contact. That, I think, is the hardest. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I think we're all we're all you know just just uh, dumbfounded by how, how how much progress we made so quickly. Uh, we use the remote sensing instruments, SuperCam, uh, the MassCam camera, and the idea being that this is where we start to see the transition from ancient Mars that was relatively habitable. We just have a whole group of scientists in that group figuring out what the plan is. They're looking at the images that have come down the night the night before. Uh, uh, they're trying to figure out what rocks are of most interest, what kind of work we might be able to do on them, whether we just want to take pictures, whether we want to do remote science, or whether we want to actually do what's called contact science, where we put the arm out onto the surface and make measurements that way. Some people's home network Wi-Fi bandwidth can be a limiter. Um, 
if we don't quite have enough bandwidth to do, especially when we're doing uh, looking at the images and uh, the 3D animations of the drives and, and the uh, contact science targets, um, that's pretty heavy graphics. And so sometimes it can get a little slow just from transferring it over the network. Um, and because, you know, since everyone's at home now, the networks are being taxed even more <laughs> than they normally would be. 